my mom's boyfriend mm -hmm. has like I It's almost like a little curve for students who come in and do their work, but maybe they don't excel on the test. It's a quiz grade, you know, just for, just for participating. Okay. So as you're looking through the um the exponent properties on page three oh three, there's a lot of them. We have used them before in algebra one. Um so I'll use them again here. So we're just gonna review what do you do with a variable or multiple variables with exponents. So and yeah, that's got like an example for each property. So in number one, I see um, x and another x and another x. So this is multiplying the same base. Whenever you multiply the same base, whether it be a number or a variable, you add your exponent. So to rewrite it, I would say this is x to the 2 plus 6 plus 2. So this is x to the 10th. That's all you got to do. And then I was like, well, can I make a negative now? And I was like, well, half the class already did it. All right, I'll show you. There was a negative sign right there. It must have gotten erased. So I'll do it again um, with, for everyone who did it with a negative. I would then subtract it. So that would be 8 minus 2 is x to the 6. So if you had this written down with that negative sign, you did it right. Yes. So if this question was on the next level, so you said, what would be your real answer? I would take both. So it's pretty easy to see, like, five people all have the same answer. And then, um, but it's not what I had written down. I'll look at their work or I'll look at what they have and compare. And I'm a little bit flexible. Um, well, negative exponents lead to reciprocals, and I can actually explain why. You guys want to know why negative exponents are reciprocals? Let's do it with the power of five. So, um, <clears throat> five squared is 25. Everybody good with that? Five times five is 20. Maybe I'll even start with five to the third is 125. Um, and then 5 to the 3rd is 5. 5 to the 0 power, anybody know what that down is? Yeah, anything to 0 power is always 1. I know, but it's not. Anything to 0 power is 1. 5 to the negative 1st is actually 1 fifth. Negative x one is really to fractions or reciprocal. Um, and then 5 to the negative second is 1 over 25. And 5 to the negative third is 1 over 125. Anybody have any questions about that? Like, so when you put 5 to negative 1 in the calculator, it will pop out 1 fifth. Or 5 negative 3, it will pop out 1 over 125. Um, so if you can figure out the pattern backwards, it helps you understand why those fractions come from. Can anybody identify how, for instance, 25 becomes 5? A third. How does 125 back up become 25? Oh, there's a pattern. 
five in here. It divides by five. So one twenty five divided by five is twenty five. Twenty five divided by divided by five is five. Five divided by five is one. That's why you can see zero power is one. It's that number divided by five. One divided by five is then one fifth. One fifth divided by five is one over one one twenty five. So the process of uh, raising something to a power is multiplying it by itself. So if you think about the opposite, taking a power away is dividing it by itself. So taking a power away leads to division. Negative exponents are division. Okay. So that's how we have negative exponents. It's your division. Question. Number two. All right. So anything to the zero power is one. So number two is just one. When you have the um, parentheses, the exponent on the outside, the price of everything is zero. Number three, so here I don't see the same base. I don't see X repeated again. So this is the power of a power. Let me write that out. You multiply exponent You multiply those exponents. So if I wanted to show my work, I would do X to the 2 times negative 1, which is x to the negative 2. You never leave negative exponents. You write that reciprocal. So this is 1 over x squared. This is your final answer for full credit. What if there was a negative exponent attached to a variable in the middle of a polynomial? Um, well, negative exponents on variables mean that it's not a polynomial. What if I gave you an example? Would that help clarify my question? Can you also write it as x is to the x minus one over two x plus one? No. You cannot leave negative exponents in um, answers. It's not simplified. So then how would you solve it if that negative exponent is smack dab in the middle? We'll look at some examples in notes. Okay, number four. So first I'll do, you know, five divided or fifteen divided by negative five, because that's how you know for you. Negative three. Negative three. When it comes to exponents, this is m to the fifth over m squared. There's five m and here's two m, right? So when you first start, if you want to write out all those m's and cancel. Two will cancel, leaving three on top. Yes, or just subtract. M to the fifth minus two M to the third. But just canceling out more quickly. You can do that. Next one up. But what happens with these M's? Can you do that one? negative two, and then that negative two is going to drive it to the bottom. So when there's more on the bottom, so what you, you can kind of just visualize, you know, if there's two on top and four on bottom cancel, there's two left over in the denominator. Okay. And that can be done in mental math, total mental math. You don't have to show work on these. Or so basically, if you have a negative exponent anywhere, you just put the attached coefficient on the bottom of the fraction sign. Well, yeah. Or if it starts on the bottom negative, you just put positive. Isn't that crucial what we're going to simplify and it's going to ask us if it's a polynomial? Um, just the section of 1 to 5 seconds. Yeah, I'm about to talk about something you might want to be here for, but. Number three is here. Number 
Just one. Anything to a zero power is just one. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys about an optional project today. Um, the reason I'm telling you about it today is so you have time to plan, and then maybe you can do it over break if you want to, but you don't have to. It's optional. Totally optional. And it's actually, it's not due for like a, a month, so when you decide to do it, it's on you. Well, three, three and a half weeks. It's uh yes, it's supposed to be for the end of it's supposed to be for the end of um second quarter, right before your exam. So you guys know that you have an exam. So this is due like the week before exam. Yeah, there's a semester exam. Yeah. Okay, so let me answer all these questions. So it's 100 optional points, which means it's not extra credit, but it's like taking a 100-point test and possibly getting a 100, right? If you're currently earning 95 or higher on tests, this project does not use your points or your grade, okay? You can do it to put more points into your grade book. But this is for students who maybe um, don't score that high on tests, but you can average in a 100 out of 100, which can help your average. So um, you make a video uh, putting a board and a mask on that in Matthew 14, 1. No, but I'm good at making videos. So anyway, um. Honestly, the easiest thing to do is to pick an example from your book and bring it to life. So you could do um, the t-shirt example where we talked about the revenue that you earn. You just have to change the numbers. So you could say, well, at my store, I currently sell 500 t-shirts um, for $15. I think if I drop the price, I'll sell this many more. And then you work that out. So you just kind of um, act out the word problem like it's a real story. Yeah, just say like something like that. Or you could um kick a soccer ball and like you know do like a ride over and talk about how high the ball went and find the so vertex, the find the vertex. You know, so look through your um book and use those examples to get you ideas. If you want to do music, some people are good at writing lyrics and they want to do that. You can use. Can make a lyrical music video. There's lots of examples. I mean, the quadratic formula has been done a million times. So there's lots of examples of that one on YouTube. What kind of music does it have? Just as long as it's appropriate. It's fine. Okay, so we're allowed to rap as long as we keep Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of music does it have? All right, back on track. So you can have um, three partners, which means a maximum of four people in your group. Not every person has to be in the video, so you can write down, like, um, I am going to video, the other people are going to be on that side. So maybe I'm good at doing the math, and I'm helping with the math, but the other people are acting because I don't like to act. So you guys are working in a group, so you figure out who does what in those roles. Um, so... So on, t on Tuesday, November 30th, you need to hand me a piece of paper that has the names of the people in the group and the math problem you're going to explain. I didn't used to require this, but I found that students were getting overwhelmed when it was time to do it. So when you turn that into me, I'll check it. I'll make sure that it makes sense, that you've done the math right, and that you're prepared for the video. And then your video is due on Tuesday, December 7th, so you have to email me a link. Ideally, you post it to YouTube. You can make it private and just share the link with me. Um, but if you can figure out how to do it on, on Google Drive, you can do that. But if it doesn't work, that's on you. If you want to turn it in early to so make sure that it works and I can open it, I recommend you do that. Play videos are not accepted. Um, if you do it and it flops... You turn it in and, and you just didn't know all the requirements and it looks like it's going to bring your grade down. I will not put it in. Like I'm not going to 
create your grade based on an optional project. So don't be nervous about that. Just do your best and hopefully it helps. Most people get full credit, 100 points. Um, let's look at their requirements. Some people will um, make mistakes in the math when they show it, and that's a reduction of points, but that's why I started checking it early. So you have to have a storyline. You have to have a storyline, and you have to show the math. So some people will, like, go to Publix and talk about, you know, selling oranges, and then they'll come in here after school, and they'll do the math here and explain the math on a whiteboard or on a whiteboard at home or you can just write the math on paper and video, you know, the work on your paper, that's fine too. But it has to be a storyline and you have to show the work. Um, and it has to be two, over two minutes long. Yeah. So that's, that's never been a problem really. Students will do like a, maybe like an intro song or a closing song. You can do all that. If you want to have like closing credits to get your video over two minutes, I like to see you edit. That's it's cool what some people are good at. So feel free to do that. Any questions? So I don't want everybody doing the same thing. So for that reason, I have a sign up sheet on the back cabinet. It's the white one. You have to claim what section you want. So if you want to go back and um do like an absolute value problem or um Oh, chapter three. Yeah, remember, if you want to go back and do like a slope Isn't problem. Like the with piecewise functions, linear functions. So if you want to just look at a ramp outside and, and calculate the slope of the ramp, you need to find this section in the book that goes over slope formula. No, it can be somebody in a different class. Also, just one more thing, guys. Some people, you know what, I just recommend that you keep it simple. Like some people, they really want this to improve their grade. They work alone. They get it done over break. Their brother or their sister videotapes them. They get it done. It's drama free and they get their 100 points. So don't feel like you have to work with anybody. If you want to get it done yourself, that can be that can be really nice. And then you kind of take away all of those like communication problems that can come up. It's up to you. Yes, Gabby. Um, I, I mean, it's always great to have like an interesting way to review. So, um, in the past I have said, yes, we're going to show it. Um, but if you have like an issue, yeah, I'm thinking about maybe offering extra credit to show it. So, um, no. so it's, What's interesting is that I've, I've done this project for years and years and years, and the more involved you guys have become on social media, Snapchat, TikTok, the less willing you are to put yourselves out there, which is kind of sad. Like, I don't know if it's the judgment or whatever, but I used to have a lot more participation in this before social media became so huge. So I think you're just scared people are going to talk about it after it's over. So um, that's that's a bummer. I just want you to um, not worry about what people are gonna say and just it doesn't have to be that serious. Just put yourself out there, create something, and look at a word problem. That's all it is. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, Ooh, a scatter plot and a line of fit, I was going to say, is a good one. I think that takes up a lot of time. It's easy to explain. Maybe 5-8, 5-7. Oh, you could be an electrician. Talk about electricity. I don't know, man. You got the bug, I don't know. All right, um, I'd like to do some of these problems with you now, so open up your workbooks, write this down, let's see if you get it right.
If you were not here Friday, you need to let me know if you did the assignment. Everybody who was here got credit for it on Friday. Do you have it? Wait. If you were absent, you don't have credit for it yet. If you were here, everybody got credit. It's on the board, so. This isn't anywhere. This is now. Yeah. If you were not here Friday, you need to do that assignment. What? What? <laughs> All right, so um, they are in your assignment. So I see um A's, B's, and C's. So um. One of the first things I would do in a problem like this that has negative exponents. Well, when I see the same base, oh, so many right ways to do this. When I see the same base repeated, I'm going to add that. So I'm going to do negative 3 plus 2. I still got b to the fourth. C to the negative 1. This is an example for your notebook. Call it example 1, properties of exponents. This is nowhere to be found. You have to write it down. I moved on. Okay, so from there, I would get A negative 1, B4, C negative 1. Now, negative exponents are not. Never leave a negative exponent in a final answer. It's like a whole operation. So here, um, it's not a fraction, but I, I'd like to see it as a fraction. So I'm going to put this whole thing over 1. And anything with a negative exponent becomes a part of the denominator. So I'm going to circle this, and I'm going to put it down on the bottom. And I'm going to circle this, and I'm going to put it down on the bottom. So I have b to the fourth in the numerator, a positive 1, b positive 1. And that's the final answer. Now, do we really need to write those little ones there? No. Yeah, it could just be ac. ac would be a little better. But I'm just showing you, I take whatever that is, and I make it positive after it's zero. Okay, let's try another one. So every one of these problems looks extremely unique and different. Just practicing the properties. Okay. Um, Madison, if you could put your device away and write this problem, attempt it. It'd be the best use of your time. So on a problem like this, there's two great ways um, to think about it. Option one is to subtract 2 minus 10. With fractions, you subtract. We get a negative 8. You can't leave negative exponents. Put it under 1. Option two. And this 
think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Head down the left. Two will cancel. There's nine on top, so I just put a one. And there's eight down the left. These things are equivalent. Just different ways of looking at it. Sometimes these negative exponents mess people up. So I like to show this way. If you can understand this way, it's almost a little better than this. What you're doing in subtracting is canceling out, right? Okay, let's try this one. Looks totally different. I'll do this one and maybe one more and then I'll be done. So this little three here has an invisible one with it. And when there's a power outside of parentheses, you multiply exponents. So I'm going to show a lot of work. You don't have to show this first step, but this is what we're doing. It would be 3, 1 times 2, A, 3 times 2, over B, 4 times 2. You don't really even have to show that. You can just multiply it. So that's 3 squared, A to the 6 b to the 8th, so 3 times 3 is 9, and that's your final answer. Multiplied in all of those exponents. The big mistake will be, students will write it sit here, because they do 3 times 2 instead of the exponent. So your ability to work these out just has a lot to do with prior experience. Once you guys try this one and then you can um, get to work on your workbook page. Um, so it's multiple choice. That's multiple choice. So when you multiply the same base, you add exponents. So I'm adding all of the same base exponents. Now I have a negative exponent, so I want to think about fraction Wait, form. Do you always add? When you, you mean as opposed to a subtract? No, you could have done that subtraction. Plus a negative is the same as subtracting. That's what he means? Yeah. So this is um, over 1. So I'm going to circle this negative exponent and put it down into a denominator spot. y squared, z squared, and x is down below the fraction bar. No, because it has a positive 2. So only negative? Right. That's exactly right. Only negative exponent. Yeah, because the... Um, Here they both have negatives. Alright, so I do encourage you to read um, 
Right, and some of these rubric problems should feel like a challenge. So, do you have a question? And then you put it in the denominator and make it positive. So I had x negative 5 so in the denominator. So it must be c. It was c, you guys. y squared, z squared, and x down now is positive because I put it down below. Um, I'm available after school.